हरे कृष्णा लॉन्ग पर्पट दिस इज श्रीमद भागवतम एट ट्वेल्व एट एक सदस स्वर्णम कृता इवे नवस्तु भेद अज्ञानतस्वन विहित विकल्पो यस्मागुण वृतिको निरूपा My dear Lord, your Lordship alone is the cause and effect. Therefore, although you appear to be two, you are the absolute one. There is no difference between gold of a gold ornament and gold in a mine, and there is no difference between cause and effect. Both of them are same. Only because of ignorance, do people concoct differences and dualities. You are free from mental contamination, and since the entire cause and the cause are you, cannot exist without you. It is an effect of your transcendental qualities. Thus, the conception of Brahman is true, and the world false cannot be maintained. परिणामवाद विवर्तवाद जब चैत्र महाप्रभु जगन्नाथपुरी आते हैं चैत्र महाप्रभु कम्स टू जगन्नाथपुरी देर इज मेनी कम्स टू टेक दर्शन ऑफ जगन्नाथ इज अलोन एंड वेन ई एंटर्स अ प्लेस ही फेन्स He takes one step, two steps, and he faints. So when you go to holy places, what is more important is the consciousness. The effect is different based on consciousness. Why only holy place? Sometimes what happens? We too much meditate on the dham, mahatmya of the dham. If you visit the holy place, this benefit you get. Correct? But you forget there is mahatmya of the holy name also. Sometimes, generally, some people always meditating on yatra. I have to go Mayapur yatra. I have to go Vrindavan yatra. It is good to go. Not that we should not go. We should go. But holy name is also very powerful. Dham Mahatma is there. Naam Mahatma is also there. Bhagwat Mahatma is also there. That people don't. People generally ignore. They ignore Naam Mahatma. भागवत महात्म्य दे आर फोकस्ड ऑन धाम महात्म्य सो एक्चुअली नाम महात्म्य एंड भागवत महात्म्य इज मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट बिकॉज एनी वेयर वी कैन सेट एन वी जस्ट लाइक वी हैव हरिदास ठाकुर हरिदास ठाकुर नेवर वेंट टू वृंदावन वी आज ऑलवेज इन मायापुर लॉर्ड चेतन ही वेंट टू जगन्नाथपुरी फ्रॉम मायापुर जगन्नाथपुरी ही नेवर वेंट टू वृंदावन सो मेनी डिवोटीज डिड नॉट गो कैन इन चेतन लीला But what was more important is that they were focused on Nam and Bhagwat Mahatma. They were chanting the holy names of the Lord and hearing Shri Mad Bhagwatam. So Chetan Mahaprabhu anyway came to Jagannath Puri, and when he entered the temple, he was in total pure consciousness. And as he took one step, two step, boom! The total transformation in his consciousness, and he became unconscious. At this moment now, Asuhas, thoda fan ka aaj ka. At this moment now, for Chetan Mahaprabhu was unconscious. One, the there was what you can say, uh, the uh, the pandas. They wanted to beat because that was disturbing the darshan. Now they have to do bhoga offering. If you have seen Chagana Temple, they have to do bhoga offering, and a sannyas is lying in the middle. Unconscious. So Sarma Bhattacharya, being the head priest there, said, "Wait a minute. This is not ordinary. This is extraordinary." He picked up Chetan Mahaprabhu, and this comes liberation of Sarma Bhattacharya in Chetan Charita Mita. Why? Because this tattva is same. So then, after bringing Chetan Mahaprabhu, he brought it to his own home, and then. When Chetan Mahaprabhu was lying unconscious, he was worried whether he is alive. So what did he do? His own uh, method, like today you have stethoscope, so many things. He put a cotton swab near his nose, soft, and slowly it was moving. He understood he is alive, and he is in 
he is unconscious now in transcendental bliss we only know material bliss chaitanya mahaprabhu shows immense transcendental bliss inviting us to taste spiritual happiness and personally showing how much happiness is possible if we take to spiritual life then after that was over uh the this other people were following chaitanya mahaprabhu for certain reason chaitanya mahaprabhu did not keep them with them nityananda prabhu and the whole team they came to jagannath temple and even nityananda prabhu was about to faint the others held him and they came to know through gopinath acharya that actually chaitanya mahaprabhu is in the house of sarav bhattacharya and he fainted so they went to the house of Chit- uh, sarav bhattacharya chaitanya mahaprabhu lying unconscious and what do they do they loudly chant the krishna nama and chaitanya mahaprabhu comes to external consciousness and sarav bhattacharya was quite astonished because he knew this is some spiritual this is not material what is happening even though he is not from the vaishnava school he is from the mayavada school and chaitanya mahaprabhu and he started talking so sarav bhattacharya happened to be very close to nilambar chakravarti who was chaitanya mahaprabhu's mother's side a great scholar jagannath mishra had married the daughter of nilambar chakravarti nilambar chakravarti was a boom a huge scholar of that time sarav bhattacharya knew him so they became quite like related and after that uh, Ch- Ch- uh, he started talking to chaitanya mahaprabhu with great affection and chaitanya mahaprabhu was very humble and he said this sanyasi is so young so handsome and so young how will he maintain his sanyasa ashram not possible he should hear vedanta very important so chaitanya mahaprabhu said okay i am at your shelter whatever you want me to do Uh, maintaining me because he was at the residence so whatever you say sai actually we should not hear sharirika bhashya we are forbidden by lord chaitanya mayavada bhashya hue sarvanasha but not for god krishna is not affected you, he is hearing anyway every day he is hearing so many people mayavadi speaking sharirika bhashya he is not affected so then he started seven days adwaita acharya sorry sarva bhattacharya spoke from morning to evening morning to evening and after seven days of explanation in the line of sharirika bhashya shankaracharya's explanation of the vedanta sarva bhattacharya spoke he was a great scholar he was such a great scholar the sanyasis were his disciple itna bada pandit tha ki sanyasi uske shishya the sarva bhattacharya was a immense scholar and chaitanya mahaprabhu was hearing him silent not a word on the eighth day he asked chaitanya mahaprabhu you are sitting totally silent what is the matter chaitanya mahaprabhu said i am a fool you are telling me here vedanta i am hearing what i can understand a bada bada cheez he is not revealing his mind the sarvabhata acharya says are baba if you do not understand you can ask a question no? why you are sitting like this not one word then chaitanya mahaprabhu says if you allow me then i will reveal my mind oh my god he is see how humbly he is approaching correct he could have said this nonsense kya bakwas hai he could have said no very nice because we can give instruction a person ready to take otherwise we're just throwing jewels on the road we should not do correct chaitanya mahaprabhu teaches by personal example first he creates a ground preaching means first you have to develop a connection hai na Otherwise, without developing a relationship, a connection, if you throw instruction, it will just like throwing jewels on the road. It doesn't know. People should be able to receive. So, Jyotir Babu says, "If you don't mind, then I can reveal my mind." Oh, really? Please tell me. He says the meaning of the Vedanta is as clear as the sun, and you are covering it by the cloud of your interpretation. This is not the real explanation. So, okay, can you tell me the real explanation? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then started explaining. You are saying that God doesn't have personality. God does not have form. आप बोल रहे हैं भगवान का आकार नहीं है, भगवान का गुण नहीं है. गलत है ये सब. God, what is? How can you say this? God is Shadeshwar ya Poona. He has wonderful qualities. If there is a mention of impersonalism in the Shastra, that is to negate the material feature. If there is a mention God doesn't have form, it is to show God doesn't have material form. nirakara if it is to say god does an a quality nirguna it is to say god does an a material qualities you have taken a wrong understanding of the vedanta and you know he kept explaining 
So Anabhattacharya was hearing. Then he says there are three aspects in the Veda, Sambandha, Abhideya, Prayojana. Sambandha means the Vedas are only three things. How do it, how, what is the relationship between me and the Lord? Sambandha. Abhideya, how to develop that relationship, the process to revive that relationship. And Prayojana, the love of Krishna. There are only three things in the Vedas. What are you speaking all those things? Okay. And after speaking this, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained there are three features of the Brahman. Brahman, Paramatma, Bhagavan. Parabrahman, the Lord has three features. Brahmeti, Paramatma, Bhagavan, Iti, Shabdate. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, after concluding this, he says, Shankaracharya is not at fault for giving this kind of explanation because he was ordered to do this by the Lord. And he started quoting from Uttar Khanda, Padma Purana, two verses. One of the verses I remember. Maya vada mashashasam prachanna bhauda mochyate maye vihitam devi kalo brahmana rupane. Maya vadam ashashasram. What I am going to teach is Maya vada. Shankaracharya is telling Devi, I am supposed to teach this. And it is hidden Buddhism. Maya vadam ashashasram prachamuna bhauda mochyate. In Kalyuga, I am going to speak it. And the previous verse, the Lord is ordering Shiva, go and bewilder the people and create a mass of people which are away from me, which go away from me. So that to create. So this is the two verses. And hearing these two verses, because it is quoted from the Shastra, Sarabhattacharya says, What? You see, he was holding an opposite view, totally. Impersonalism. But he had full faith in the Shastra. Shri Shri Radha Govinda Ki. See, so many times what happens is that we have uh, people having opposite view, a different view. You take Prabhupada book and I show them, see, you are saying it is like that. But Prabhupada is saying something here. People say, no, I will not accept. Strange it is. Right? Even in the understanding of Krishna conscious philosophy, now Srila Prabhupada is not physically present. Some people have some conception in so many areas. You show them, you know, you have that conception, but Prabhupada says so. It still doesn't change. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Isn't it funny? You sometimes you know, my, by my experience, eh? if you're working by your experience, why do you have a guru? You don't go by experience. That is the main problem of the Mayavada. Mayavada mainly establishes itself on our own experience and logic. Therefore, it cannot understand God. Mayavada goes by what is we call as Kupa Manduka Naya, logic of the frog in the well. <coughs> what a frog can conceive is very little. The world is very big. So similarly, we cannot conceive of a personality which has a transcendental form. We cannot conceive of the transcendental form. We can see material form in this world. So we imagine God has no material form. This is our capacity. This is what our understanding. But what is a fact? God has form. God has spiritual form. But this is beyond their conception. Most of the time when you talk to people, they say God has form. They say, how is it possible? Somebody has form and is present everywhere. How it is possible? This is what people ask question. When you have a form, you are limited to a place. How can you present everywhere when you have a form? Therefore, God other than a form is all present. That's what the Mayavadi speak. But then this is like using Kupa Madhu Kanaya, logic of your frog in a well. Correct? So this is not correct. We have to accept the Shastra. There is something called transcendental form. There is something called transcendental world. There is something called transcendental relationship. There is something called transcendental happiness, which all they deny. They deny transcendental happiness, they deny transcendental form, they deny transcendental abode, they deny transcendental relationship with the Lord. Correct? They deny all these things they deny. Why? Because they are using logic as a way to understand God which is not possible. You are not getting late. So in this way we see, in this way we see here, uh, uh, the, the discussion goes on and Sarno Bhattacharya already stuck with wonder. Then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu quotes him the verse from Atmarama verse from uh, now there is a discussion on Parinama Vada and Vivarta Vada. This is what is actually Prabhupada is doing here. Vivarta Vada and Parinama Vada means there is a transformation of energy of God in this world which is quite logical. 
we are nothing the body is nothing but energy of the lord getting transformed vivartavada says actually i am spirit this world no transformation it's an illusion thus does not exist brahma satya jagat mithya what is this world so many varieties this is all illusion therefore they are scared of varieties they say this all varieties is an illusion there is only brahman and another problem chetan mahapur points out is that so what is better is parinama vada not vivarta vada theory of illusion vivarta vada is theory of illusion parinama vada is theory of transformation of the lord's energy uh, so this is a discussion goes on uh, and this chetan mahapur keeps establishing and finally chetan mahapur quotes a verse from the shrimad bhagavatam beautiful verse आत्मराश्च मुन निर्गृति अभी उक्रमे कुरुति अहेतु किम भक्ति इतम भूतगुणो हरि ब्यूटिफुल इट सज आत् इवन इफ पर्सन इज सेल्फ रियलाइज एक्चुअली वॉन्टेड सरोबट्टचार्य टू टेक टू कृष्ण कॉन्शियस टू दै फॉर इज से आत्मराश्च मुन इज अ ग्रेट सेज इज टोटली सेल्फ रियलाइज आत्मराश्च मुन निर्गृति इज फ्री फ्रॉम ऑल अटैचमेंट उक्रमे kurvanti ahetu kim bhaktim he takes to the supreme lord he starts devotion service ittam bhut guno hari because lord has such wonderful qualities even a self realized soul takes to devotion service to krishna when sarabhatacharya hears that verse again he stan he says he knows about that verse because a famous verse from bhagavatam he says chetan babu can you explain this verse chetan babu first you explain So now again, he's used. Uh, he's a scholar of dry logic. He gives nine explanation of that verse. So Chetan Mahapru, and he tells Chetan Mahapru, "Can you explain?" Chetan Mahapru now start taking each word of this verse, take various meanings of it, and he starts multi explanation of this verse. Sarabhata Chare, as I understood now, on his own way, understand he's God himself now. Just like uh, we don't know what is anesthesia, you know. Now, if you see a genius of any size, you can understand he is a genius. Correct? For an outsider, we can't understand who was genius, who was ordinary. We just don't know the field only. Now, he is a scholar. So, no matter what, in his vein, just like Jambavan was fighting with Lord Krishna, when fighting, fighting occurred, in his way, he understood here is God, because nobody can fight with him. Correct? You understand? We have to convince person in his way. So, similarly, now, so no matter what, he got convinced he is God. and he surrendered to chetan mahaprabhu and chetan mahaprabhu uh, out of uh, mercy to him showed him first the vishnu form and then the krishna form and sarabhatacharya saw that he was totally now he revealed himself to him and then he composed 100 verses then and there on the spot he was such a scholar he was anyway that goes on and then he becomes a chetan mahaprabhu then embraces him and he then transforms into spiritual ecstasy just like sanat kumaras when they smell the tulsi and the lotus feet of the lord and they see the beautiful form of the lord narayana they also transform into spiritual ecstasy the same way he also transformed into spiritual ecstasy by chetan mahapuru after embracing and he is in spiritual ecstasy so here so the same way what is happening is that this is good that lord shiva himself is countering the philosophy gave us shankaracharya I'm not able to understand the reason why Prabhu is spending eight, nine pages to elaborate, elaborate for what. Maybe that we can quote tomorrow. You say Shiva's, they know Shiva is Shankaracharya, and you say that Shankaracharya says uh, this philosophy that you are illusion. Everything is illusion. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> this world is not an illusion. Uh, sorry, you are truth, but world is illusion. This is not true. Actually, uh, the world is not an illusion. It is temporary. Therefore, Prabhu quotes a famous verse. Composed by Rupa Goswami, Prapanchikaya Buddhya Hari Sambandhi Vasu Naha Mumukshvi Paritiyago Falgu Veeraghe Uchchate. As somebody could have been something can be used for Krishna service, you do not use. That is nonsense. You should use, and something which can Hari Sambandhi Vasu Naha somebody can be used for Krishna service, and you engage in in Krishna service. That is Yukta Veeraghe Uchchate. That is what is recommended. So this world is not an illusion. The way we are looking at this world is an illusion. Uh, Prapa says, uh, "What you they say this world is an illusion, and let us renounce it." 
Prabhupada, what you what you going to renounce? You have to renounce a doggish mentality that you are the enjoyer of this world. That's all I have to renounce. A doggish mentality that I am the enjoyer of this world has to be renounced. Okay, so Krishna is actually uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is showing a clear way. It is said that the uh, Kaliyuga is like an ocean, and there are big big fishes like Timingla. Timingla is a big fish mentioned in the Shastra. We don't see that today. Uh, Timingla can eat a whale also. It is so huge. Either it is extinct or we have not seen it in the ocean. Maybe lying. They got some extinct specimens which show fishes which are massive. They have got. Which are not today, which are having massive size, just like they have dinosaurs uh, in the skeleton, but we don't see it today. On the ocean, also they have some uh, fishes which we do not see today, which are massive. So we can understand. But anyway, it can be in other part of the universe also. It says that there are many, many timingla or many sharks in Kaliyuga. Take simple sharks. There are many sharks, and it is very difficult to cross the ocean in Kaliyuga. But Chetan Mahaprabhu is so kind, he gives a clear path to us. Very clear path. And to realize this path, uh, the, he gives, gives us the Iya Haita Sarva Siddhi Tomar. He says if we can simply chant the Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, we can gradually realize the truth of the Shastra. Srila Prabhupada ki, Srimad Bhagavatam ki,